Today's topic from Idaho Viking is math, physics, momentum, energy, and jet boats. The math and physics purists may say, hey dummy, your math and physics are not exactly correct, which is true, but they're close enough to get the point across, and that's the point. And an assumption I'm making is that there's no friction between the boat and the water. This means that if I give the boat a shove, it will keep going forever. It's true that this simplification isn't particularly realistic, but even so, you can still learn a lot even with this simplification. So here I am in my boat, and I happen to see a basketball floating on the water, and this particular basketball happens to weigh 8 pounds, which is the same weight as a gallon of water. So I decide to pick the basketball up and throw it off the boat at 40 miles per hour. This will make the boat speed up a little bit, but how much? To help answer this question, we'll turn to the concept of conservation of momentum. In this case, conservation means that what you start with is what you end with. So if you start with zero momentum, then you'll end with zero momentum. Momentum is defined as mass times velocity, or mv. So you can see that if you have a large mass and large velocity, then you'll have a lot of momentum. And if you have little mass and little velocity, then you'll have very little momentum. When thinking about momentum, you have to remember that the velocity has direction. Uh, for example, when you're driving around on the highway and you're going 50 miles an hour, you really don't care what direction you're going, you're still going 50 miles an hour. But when you're dealing with momentum, that velocity has a direction. So in this case, if we throw something at 50 miles per hour to the right, we'll say it's going plus 50 miles per hour. And if we throw it to the left, or backwards off the back of the boat, then we'll say it's going minus 50 miles per hour. So now we'll see how much momentum we start with. Initially, when I'm standing in the back of the boat, staring at the ball that's floating in the water, the ball weighs 8 pounds and is moving at 0 miles per hour, so it has zero momentum. Meanwhile, the boat weighs 4,000 pounds and is also moving at 0 miles per hour, so it also has zero momentum. 0 plus 0 is 0, so that means we start with a momentum of 0, and it also means we'll end up with a momentum that's 0. After I throw the ball off the back of the boat, the ball still weighs 8 pounds, but it's moving at minus 40 miles per hour. So its momentum is minus 320 pounds mass miles per hour. Note that the uh, pounds mass miles per hour is, that's not a minus sign between them, that's actually a hyphen. So this leads to the question, do we know how much momentum the boat has? And the answer is yes we do. The ball has minus 320 pounds mass miles per hour of momentum, and minus 320 plus what equals zero? Well, that what has to be 320, so that's the boat's momentum. We can use this information to get the boat's velocity. Simply take the momentum of 320 and divide by the boat's mass of 4,000, and we get a velocity of 0 0.08 miles per hour. So the ball was moving pretty fast, and now the boat has picked up a small amount of speed. So now we know how the boat speeds up when we throw one ball, but ha what happens when we throw a second ball? In this case, the ball is going off the back of the boat at minus 40 miles an hour, but the boat is also moving at 0 0.08 miles per hour, so the ball's new speed when I throw it off the back is only minus 39.92 miles per hour. So its momentum is slightly less than the first ball. Next, we can use the ball's momentum to get a change in velocity for the boat. Take the ball's momentum with a sign swap on the velocity and divide by the boat's mass of 4,000 pounds and we get the change in the boat's velocity. Note that this velocity change is very slightly smaller than the velocity change from the first ball. 
This trend will continue with each successive ball having slightly less effect on the boat's velocity. This has an interesting effect as the boat's speed approaches 40 miles per hour. Each time I pick up a ball, it speeds up to the same speed as the boat, or 40 miles per hour in the forward direction. Then when I throw it off the back at minus 40 miles per hour, the resulting speed is zero. So that means the net change in momentum for the ball is zero, and the net change in momentum for the boat will also be zero. So I'm just throwing balls off the back of the, the boat to no purpose and wasting a whole lot of energy. This graph shows the boat speed relative to the number of balls thrown. You can see that 500 balls gets me up to about 25 miles per hour and it takes about a thousand balls to get to 35 miles per hour. I can keep throwing lots and lots more balls and gradually approach 40 miles per hour but I'll never quite get there. And recall that this particular boat is special because it doesn't have any frictional resistance with the water. So even with this special boat there's still a top speed that cannot be exceeded and that's the speed of the balls relative to the boat. Now suppose we want to speed up twice as fast. Two obvious options are to throw two balls at a time off the back of the boat or to throw each ball twice as fast. In our original setup the, the ball's momentum was mv. If we throw two balls at a time then m becomes 2m and the 8 becomes 16. If we throw the balls twice as fast, then V becomes 2V and the minus 40 becomes minus 80. Now we'll see how this plays out on our graph of boat speed. For the sake of argument, we'll say that we were throwing a thousand balls per minute off the back of the boat. And recall that each ball weighed 8 pounds, which is the same as a gallon of water so we can say that we were throwing a thousand gallons of water off the back of the boat per minute. You can see the black line is the original boat speed and the red line is the new speed when we're throwing twice as many gallons of water off the back of the boat at minus 40 miles per hour. As expected the boat speeds up twice as fast but then the acceleration slows earlier and again it flatlines at about 40 miles per hour. This is true regardless of how quickly we're throwing the balls off the back of the boat. If we're throwing a million balls per minute off the back of the boat and they're all moving at minus 40 miles per hour, the boat will still flatline at 40 miles per hour. You just can't go faster than that. Now we'll look at the case where we're throwing the same number of balls but we're throwing them twice as fast at 80 miles per hour off the back of the boat. As expected, the red and green lines initially accelerate at the same speed, but where the red line flatlines at 40 miles per hour, the green line keeps accelerating and eventually flatlines at twice the speed at 80 miles an hour. But this is expected because that's the speed that we're throwing the balls off the back of the boat. At this point it would be easy to jump to the conclusion that you always want to throw the balls twice as fast off the back of the boat rather than throwing twice as many. However, it turns out this is true only part of the time and this is related to energy efficiency. Here you can see the now familiar equation for momentum and the new equation for energy which is one half mv squared. If I want to double the momentum, I can either double the mass or double the velocity, and each has the same effect. But in the energy equation, if I double the mass, then I double the energy, but if I double the velocity, then I actually multiply the energy by 4. So let's look at this a little closer. Here's the original equation for one-half mv squared. And here's the revised equation when I throw twice as many balls. Here you can see the m is replaced by 2m 
and then when we simplify the equation it ends up 1 mv squared. The 1 is twice the original 1 half so I'm burning energy at twice the rate of the original. And here's the equation if I throw the same number of balls but at twice the speed. So I just have m and then 2v. When I square the 2 that turns into a 4 and simplifying the equation it turns into 2mv squared. The leading 2 is 4 times the original 1 half so this means I'm burning energy at 4 times the original rate. So what does this mean relative to our diagram of boat speed? Well the red line is burning energy at twice the rate the black line is and the green line is burning energy at twice the red line. If you look down in at the uh, at the relatively low speed area, the green and red line accelerate at the same rate, but the green line is using energy at twice the rate of the red line. So in this region, the green line is very inefficient compared to the red line. And you might think of the red line as being a twin engine boat and the green line being a similar sized but single engine boat. The twin can actually be much more efficient even though it has two engines. But if you want to go fast, then you need to throw water out the back of your boat really fast, and that's the green line. It will be inefficient, but so it goes. If you want to go fast, you have to throw the water fast. Relative to common jet boat or lexicon, someone may ask the question, what's the difference between this and that pump? And the answer may be something like, well, this pump is a volume pump, and that pump is a pressure pump. But this doesn't really answer the question. It just raises uh, two more questions, which are, what's a volume pump and what's a pressure pump? And the answers are, a volume pump is basically high mass at low velocity, and a pressure pump is low mass at high velocity. So a volume pump is more like a Hamilton 212 and similar, and a pressure pump is more like a Berkeley and similar. The volume pump is more efficient at low speed operation and the pressure pump, though less efficient, will get you to a higher top speed. And now I'm about out of time, so that's the end.